Gamers, this is the one and only Riders League guide that you need to watch. I want to give you some thoughts on different weapon choices. I want to give you some thoughts on different artifact sets, as well as some team builds. And I want to give you my thoughts on Riders League. If you want my quick and dirty so you don't have to watch the rest of this video, he is a DPS. He does his job pretty darn well. He has a few different options for teams, and I think that he's pretty good. But I do not think he's revolutionary. And personally, I despise when they put a ton of value behind Constellations. And his Constellation 1, well, is it a lot to read, it provides a ton of value to this character and a ton of quality of life. He is much better to play with his Constellation than without it. He functions similar to how Hu Tao C0 versus C1 feels. Um, and and I, I just don't like when they do that. So let's get started. Number one, weapon choice... Um, Oddly enough, Skyward Atlas can work pretty well because it gives you this extra uh, bit of damage and you're doing lots of normal attacks. And so, so Skyward Atlas, if you want to read it right there really quickly, I think this can work pretty good. And if you've missed on, you know, the weapon banner or the standard banner, maybe you have this. But I honestly do believe that if you look at something like the Wid Sith, a lot of people into the endgame have the Wid Sith. This is a cracked weapon. If you don't know what it does, it can give you a huge attack boost, a huge elemental damage boost, or even Elemental Mastery. Now, depending on the team you're playing, if you're playing in a Melt Comp or a Reverse Melt Comp, um, this would work pretty darn good overall. The Wid Sith is a, is a great choice. All those buffs will work. But obviously, his weapon is going to be, they do this every single time, they make their weapons just better. They are uh, filling in some of the gaps with crit rate. It's got some increased crit damage. Normal attack and charge attack damage is increased with multiple stacks and attack speed. It's insane. It's so much better. It's not even, you know, nothing's even really that close. Well, maybe maybe like 10-15% worse, but still, the weapons are amazing. Just don't, don't do it. I, it's not worth it almost ever. Nothing is hard enough that you need this upgrade, but those are my thoughts really quickly on that. As for build... Is this guy easy to build? He's got a couple of really good options, in my opinion. Um, I see the value in this, this set. This is the new set that came out with Fontaine. I see the value here because it's so easy to get uptime. You get 15% normal and charge attack damage. You're doing both of them, which is beautiful. But you're going to have a max 36% crit rate built into your kit and have 100% uptime on this because you're always draining HP or increasing it. And so this set is amazing. You could also consider, especially if you can keep enemies frozen or refreezing them really quickly, um, something like the Blizzard set, because it's giving you the cryo bonus as well as up to 40% crit rate. Now, Rivers Lee can shatter enemies and pull them out of the freeze, but if you've got Xing Cho on your team, uh, you'll refreeze them almost instantly. There's almost no downtime here. You may miss a hit here and there, but for the most part, this set is cracked, and people that are roasting it they're 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 missing the point here. They're, they're they're lost. I'm telling you. If you're doing any of the other kits where you might be throwing in Kazuha, Shang Ling, if you're doing some melts, if you're trying to boost up with uh, Animo, then I think that this set overall is the better set, bar none, just because it's easy to keep up and there's no downtime on it. Now, as for his skills, let's just have a little chat about this. He's got his normal attacks. That you punch, you do some cool stuff. I want to show you a trick really quickly. Someone told me this in chat. So if you're doing your punches, right, you've got your full-on combo, and that fifth attack is a slam down. It's really cool. But there's something you can actually do here. So da ba 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 you do your slam down, and then charge. Well, you're supposed to charge in out of it. And you kind of go down, and then you charge up. It's really fun. But... You can actually dash out in the middle of his attacks. So, one, two, three, four, and then... I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm in the water. Hold on. One, two, three, four, and then you can actually skip the hit. You skip the fourth hit, and then you slam down. And so, there are situations where if you had Pyro on the enemy, and you wanted a big hit to, to get the reverse melt, you could make it work. You could also try to time it for the charge attack or something like that. There's a few ways to wake, make these normal and charge attack combos work. And I don't know if it's worth the time and effort. If I'm being 100% honest with you, I don't know if it's worth it. There is a big multiplier, though, um, on that charge. Look at this thing, right? 100, 155% damage. So, you know, it's not that much more. It's like, you know, 20% more, 30% more, but still something to consider. 
Um, if you can land a charge attack, though, this is where the big pooba is. You want to melt this. And so as long as you can reapply the, the pyro fast enough, you might steal steal the uh, the reverse melt on the fourth hit. You get a, a non-melt on the fifth hit. But as long as you can charge attack and hit that, you're going to crush the enemy. You're going to do like 100,000 damage with that hit. Um, as for his E ability, this is just making his normal attacks and charge attacks better. And um, when your HP is above 50%, you're going to get an enhanced uh, move. An enhanced uh, damage bonus. It's really cool. It'll also heal you when you do your charge attack. It's cool. It's nice. It's fun. Doesn't feel like that crazy. It just feels like you're punching with more force. And then his ultimate is this really cool, you know, area of effect attack in front of you. It looks good. Do I recommend Rythersley? Um, he doesn't feel, uh, he doesn't feel like this amazing unit that is going to be a must pull for a lot of people. Um, I tested him out with Shenha, who's like incredible for boosting cryo and felt, he felt amazing, but she would make Ayaka feel amazing. Um, I, I think that he's, he's kind of like, uh, he kind of feels like a, maybe like a Yoimiya, uh, currently. But Cryo, I think that he also doesn't have the proper supports to optimize his kit. And I think that Rivesley will be someone that gets better with time. And we actually said that recently about, uh, I don't know if he's on the account here, uh, Nouvellet. No, that's not Nouvellet, but Nouvellet, you know, you know the guy. I think that Rivesley needs almost like a bad healer, oddly enough. Or he needs someone else to be sucking his HP so that he can teeter in between the 50 and 60 HP percentage mark to make some of his, his passives and talents work. And right now, everyone just out heals and he can't really get some of the big damage boosts in his kit. Unless you have C1. And this is where we circle back and it frustrates me because C1 changes everything, all right? When HP is less than 60%, he gets this awesome boosted attack. He charge attacks, it heals him, does a bunch of extra damage, and you can use it every five seconds or so. And it's it's a great part of his kit. If you melt with this thing, it's going to crush. Um, you also get some extra attack while you're fighting. That's really cool. But here's the thing. With C1, it's a lot to read. Maybe you don't want to read it all. But essentially what happens is, yes... When your HP drops to the 60%, you get that charge. But also, um, when you're just fighting and you're in the in the E state, your E ability, um, you can proc it like every 2.5 seconds regardless of your HP. You can just proc it while you're doing your attacks and doing your combos. It's so easy to get it, and you can do it every 2.5 seconds, which is allowing you to heal. There may be even a situation where you only bring like a, a, a tiny bit of healing, like a like almost like a Xing Chou. You're freezing the enemies. They're not really hitting you. You're attacking, draining HP. Then you're healing. There are situations where you wouldn't even need a healer if you have this because you can proc this every 2.5 seconds. But on top of that, it's a 200% damage bonus instead of 50. And on top of that, you're extending his E ability by four seconds. <laughs> So, so now you're like a hyper carry always in uh, this state fighter. You rotate through everyone else, come back to him, and, and you're in that ability all day. I feel like he's a, a completely different character at C1. And that is what makes me angry. And that is what makes me not want to recommend this unit unless you were wailing out and getting C1. Because it's like, he's fine, he's good, but like the gameplay literally changes because of C1. And I despise that. I think there's a lot of good DPS units that are in the game, that are available, that can function as good, if not better than him, in the current state of the game. This video may become dated very, very quickly. Um, you know? But, I don't know. I, I think he's pretty cool. Um, I think he's one of the best visually looking characters I've seen in a long time. I'm a very big fan, and, um... You know, I don't think I'm going to get him on my account. I, I, I'm just playing on someone else's account right now, and I don't I don't see the hype. Other than visually. Other than visually, and and if you were someone who liked Haijo, if you liked that melee, like, this looks cool. It feels cool. Um, It is really awesome overall. And when you start chaining this together with his E, and you're just slamming, and just, boom! I think you get the point. Riotously, 
feels like a, a, a middle to, 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 to high tier DPS unit that doesn't bring anything other than the, the, the melee style. I think there's going to be better DPSs than him in the future. I think there's better DPSs than him now, but I don't think he's bottomed the barrel. I'd rather have this guy than Klee, you know? <laughs> I'd rather have this guy than, than probably D. Luke, honestly. <laughs> probably hits harder. Probably a little bit more, more DPS. Um, but honestly, like, I think if I start comparing to, like, another standard banner character, Tainari, like, I think Tainari is probably a better character than this guy. I, I, I hate to say it, but... Um, I just, I just don't think he's, he's like a meta breaker for me. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you soon. Subscribe for more so that I can stop losing subs every, every month. Bye.